Okay, so paper. And if you if you need ideas, me if you're having trouble coming up with that idea, email me uh, your list of favorite music or favorite movies, favorite TV shows. And remember, you're not writing about the whole album or the whole TV show or the whole movie. You're just gonna find a piece, right? When I said Iago was like the Joker, that was I just stopped. I just did a comparison between the two, and that's your paper. But you don't have to go and Othello's like Batman and Desdemona is like the district attorney. You don't you don't have to do that. You you you're not comparing the entire thing to the other entire thing. You're just comparing this. And when you're comparing, you're not just saying the plot is similar to this plot. You're saying the ideas are similar, the metaphors are similar, the ironies are similar, all the stuff we've been doing all semester. Mostly ideas, by the way. The ideas are similar in both. Um, that's going to be, I think, the, the the centerpiece of your paper. So it's pre I think it's a pretty simple paper to do. Um, it's pretty easy, and you get to write about something you love. By the way, if the thing you love is in another language, that's fine. I don't necessarily have to have seen it. You pick something, you just tell me about it. So if you want to write about a Korean soap opera or a Japanese cartoon or what the fuck ever, do it. Um, and I would like, but I would like to see something recent. Um, I want something, you know, I want something you actually care about that was made recently. Um, okay, and that's paper four. So. Um, the only so the thing about paper four is that it has a little bit of research. Now you already know how to do research because you um, uh, you pass 101 and they should have made you do a little bit of research in 101. So the question uh, we just need to review how to do research. So I'm going to do a quick review. It's going to be a little boring. Uh, not my favorite part of the semester, um, but we got to do kind of a quick review about research. So um, in your syllabus, you have a section um, called Citation MLA and Research. I don't know exactly where this is, but somewhere in your syllabus is this. Now, I didn't go over this because, again, you passed. I, put, I give this to all my students, but you, you shouldn't really need it. If You should have learned it in 101, and then my, my students after 101 should just sort of know. Um, but it's divided into three sections. So here's a little, the, the first page is sort of the, the first. This is in the syllabus, but the first page of this section. Um, just gives you some information about how I work. Um, here we have quotation, paraphrase, and summary. Now, if you pass 101, you know how to quote, you know how to paraphrase, that's when you put things in your own words, and you know how to summarize. In case you forgot, though, here's a reminder. Um, and, you know, it means you have to say, you know, Shakespeare in his play Othello says blah, 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 and you say it, you know, however he said it. Um, some information on titles. You can look at, you know, titles go in italics or quotation marks, depending on if they're long or short, blah, blah, blah. You, you should know this already. Um, MLA citation is, is the next section here. Um, now, this is the thing where you have to have a page number after the quote, right? So again, you learn that in 101, but if you forgot, the review is right there in your syllabus, so review it. But basically, you need to have a page number after quotations, and there's some other things. Read this section. Um, okay, and then you know at the bottom you're supposed to have a work cited. So this is it's a technical information. If that number up above tells you what page of the book, this tells you exactly what book. Not just the name of the book and the name of the author, but the publisher, the year, the if it's a website, the date you looked at it, if it's a website, the web address, but also the name of the person who put it up, but also the title of the video, but also where it came from. Um, if it's a movie, you're going to have to mention the director and like two performers. You got to say, how did you watch on Amazon Prime? Anyway, all of that stuff is in here. So you can review that. Um, but then the final question that comes up here is this. What's worth citing? So once you've learned how to quote, how to put things in your own words, how to summarize, how to put the little page number thing after quotations, how to put the technical information of the book at the bottom, there's a bigger question here, which is, sure, you can quote any book in a paper, but should you? Because um, a lot of things you can quote are garbage. So the question becomes, you know when you look something up on the internet and there's like a million fucking websites, the question becomes which websites are trustworthy? Which are the ones that you can actually trust to get you real information? And that is this section. Again, you already learned this. You learned this in 101. We're just going over it again. Uh, Jeff Glock style. If you took 101 with me, this is going to be real easy. Um, so what we need to do is, ha given all the things you could quote in your paper, in a college paper, you need to quote stuff that is worthy of being quoted in a college paper. It's got to be good enough. You can't just quote anything. Um, a lot of quotes are stupid. A lot of the people you're quoting are stupid. So you got to quote. You got to quote things that are trustworthy and reliable. So how can you tell? Well, let's find out. I hate teaching this. Okay. Um, so, 
You must find things to cite that are worth citing in a college paper. How can you tell worthy research materials from unworthy research materials? Okay, so number one, relevance. Get research that closely relates to what you are writing about. Um, this, um, this seems stupid, right? If you're writing about Shakespeare, get a quote about Shakespeare. If you're writing about um, Dr. Strange, get a quote about Dr. Strange. It seems obvious. But a lot of students don't do that. What a lot of students do is they, they get something that is not really relevant to their paper. For example, I'll tell you a common one. Um, sometimes students think research should be biography, so they go look up Shakespeare's biography. The problem with doing that is that we actually don't know very much about Shakespeare's life. So what I'll do is I'll get papers about Shakespeare, and the student will be like, I got a piece of research. And then they'll write in the last paragraph of their paper, they'll say, did you know Shakespeare's father was a glove maker? Unless your paper was about gloves, that is fucking useless information. It's not connected to what you're writing about. Unless your whole paper is about gloves, in which case, awesome piece of research. Um, but if your paper is about, you know, Doctor Strange or whatever, telling you that Shakespeare's dad is a glove maker is not interesting. Um, it's true, it's but it's not related to what you're doing, so don't do that. The other thing students love to do for research that's total bullshit um, Avoid things that would apply to any paper in class, such as the dictionary definition of poetry, philosophy, theater, or film. So my students will go, you know what's a good piece of research? I'm going to look some up in the dictionary. Um, and then they'll write me a paper on Shakespeare, and they'll go, Shakespeare wrote a play called The Tempest. Webster's Dictionary defines a play as no, 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 no. That's garbage. Why is it garbage? Because anybody writing any paper on Shakespeare could put that in there. The research isn't, it's got to be connected to your specific topic. So some people will be like, Shakespeare, when he wrote this play, used his imagination. Webster's Dictionary defines imagination. The Encyclopedia Britannica defines imagination. Don't do that. Because it's too broad. It's a statement about all imagination everywhere. Um, and you need a quote that is cl more closely related to the play that you're actually working on. Okay. How do you make sure something's relevant? You don't have to read the whole thing. If you find something long, you just skim it looking for a quote. Um, now, a lot of my students, they'll just look at the first paragraph and they'll take, it's amazing how many papers I read where all the quotes come from page one because the student didn't want to read more than one page. You do have to read a little bit, but you don't have to read everything. You're just skimming, looking for something that's relevant. I'll give you a simple example. Um, I was asked to give a speech at a bookstore about Iago. So I wanted to do research before I gave the speech. So I have this book on my shelf that is 800 pages long, and it's about Shakespeare. Did I reread the entire book? No, of course not. I went to the chapter about Othello, right? And you look at the, look at the table of contents. I said, okay, here's every, Shakespeare wrote 39 plays. They're all, everyone gets a chapter. I said, okay, let's go to the Othello chapter. And then I went to the Othello chapter. So the 800-page book now is only like a 20-page chapter. Awesome. Did I read the whole chapter? No, because a lot of paragraphs in that chapter were about Desdemona, or they were about uh, Rodrigo, or they were about Cassio. I just looked real quick for Iago's name because I needed something about Iago. So if the paragraph was not about Iago, I skipped it. Um, so that's what you can do for your papers too. You're gonna you're gonna hunt for something using the you can use there's an index at the back of the book that'll tell you where things are at. Um, most of you guys are gonna be Google searching, but you may find book there are whole books that you can find online. You don't have to read the whole book online. You just go find a section of what you're looking for. All right, cool. It's looking pretty good. Uh, okay. Um, credentials of the source. This is a really crucial thing. So you gotta quote sources that are trustworthy. You gotta quote experts. Um, now the tricky thing is people selling things are less trustworthy. It doesn't mean they're not trustworthy, but if someone's trying to sell you something, they're less trustworthy. So it's not so much, um, th here's the point, less advertising is better. If something is mostly advertising, you probably don't want to quote, if, if, you're, if you're quoting an article, but it's surrounded by advertising, it's much less trustworthy than if you're quoting an article and there's a little bit of advertising. And if there's no advertising, that might be best. Um, so, because if they're trying, if someone's trying to make money, they'll tell you anything to get your money, right? If someone's trying, if you go to buy a car, the guy's going to lie to you because he wants you to pay him to give you the car. Um, so it, he's not trustworthy. You can't trust what he says. So, you know, um, and this raises all kinds of big, complicated questions, and I'll talk about it in the next video. All right, cool.